this is Mandy Agnew from Farmers Better A2 and today I'm speaking with Kate Prima, our nutritionist and dietitian. Our topic today is what is this strange foss and goss? We're going to talk about prebiotics. I hope you enjoy and please know that our hearts go out to you as we navigate this pandemic. Stay safe and be well. Let's just start by talking about um, foss and goss. I think you've got a lot of good things to say about that. And that's something that I see on labels all around the place and I don't fully understand it. So maybe Kate, you can give us a rundown on what those, those are and, and why we, we want them to be going into our bodies. Absolutely, Mandy. Well, look, you know, foss and goss is written everywhere. It's on labels and people talk about it in the media and in, in news articles. It sounds like two little old aunties, doesn't it? You know, Auntie Foss and Auntie Goss. But what it really is, the, the full names, it's fructo-oligosaccharides and galacto-oligosaccharides. And think of them as like food for your friendly bacteria in your gut. And they are actually called what we call prebiotics. Everyone gets a bit confused about the prebiotics and the probiotics. The bacteria are probiotics and the foss and goss are called prebiotics. Now, these foss and goss, only foss and only goss, um, are actually carbohydrates that the body cannot digest. So they make their way all the way down to our colons, which is where our probiotics, our bacteria, actually ferment them and it gives them energy. So the, the things, the bacteria that thrives on foss and goss are things called bifidobacterium and lactobacillus. And these are the wonderful bacteria that if these numbers build up, that gives us that wonderful biome that we've got in our gut. And it kind of helps to keep the other nasty bacteria, such as E. coli, down in numbers. And that's, that's that wonderful zoo that we have in our bacteria called the gut biome. So, you know, foss and goss is actually quite important um, in our diets, Mandy, and it actually occurs naturally in foods as well. I like that little analogy of thinking we've got a little zoo in our bellies that you just said there, or in our bowels, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know what? You can upset the zoo. If you don't eat well um, and you don't provide your body with the good fructo-oligosaccharides and galacto-oligosaccharides, and there's one more called inulin, well, then your bacteria numbers kind of waver a little bit. Um, and so then you can sort of get more things wrong with you. So upset tummies and bloating and flatulence and people tend to go up to the, the doctor and say, I've got something wrong down there. Um, you know, and one thing is replacing the, the bacteria, the, the probiotics, but you know, just having those good foss and goss, which they occur in things like onions and garlics, um, your legumes. So, you know, things like your baked beans and your chickpeas um, and also things like wheat. And they're also found in milk. Beautiful. Fantastic. Thanks for that. I feel like I really know. So when I see prebiotic, prebiotics on the front of a label, I know what that means now. Yeah. Cool. You look out, look out for foss, foss and goss. Thank you. Thank you.